Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Swanky Cat Productions channel. My name is Ben. This is my 2021 Tenere 700 that has like 20 miles on it so far. Uh, my dad actually had to ride it home from me from the dealership because on my way to pick it up on my KLR, I got smashed into by a minivan and broke my foot. So as far as I know, this didn't have any issues, but if you guys follow the Tenere 700 Facebook page, uh, you may have seen some people complaining that their back wheels locked up on them on the highway because their rear reservoir was overfilled. And it's not really great lighting right here, but this mark right here is your lower level. That's your upper level here. And it looks like I've got fluid above that upper level. So I think that is filled at Yamaha, actually. I don't think the dealer does that. Uh, I guess I don't really care who does it. It's uh, definitely something that you guys should check on your bike uh, before you get on the highway with it. Um, even if you've been on the highway with it a little bit, probably a good idea to check. Uh, basically what happens or what can happen is when that fluid heats up from the tire spinning around the rotor spinning inside of the brake caliper and kind of creating friction in here, warming the fluid in here up, pushing that fluid back through the system up into here. And if there's nowhere for that fluid to expand to, then, uh, well, that pressure goes right down here and you're basically riding your brakes on the highway. And if it gets bad enough, it can lock that back tire right up. So. Definitely something you want to make sure you check into. Uh, what I think I'm going to try to do anyways is just pull this panel off here. Uh, that's still not going to give me great access to this because I think there's still a flange that sticks off of this guy. You could also just crack the bleeder on here, wherever it is, right there. But I don't think I want to do that and uh, make a huge mess of my rear swing arm. So I'm just going to try to get access to this and either kind of siphon it out or uh, maybe even just kind of spoon a little bit out of there. Green Loctite on that one. It's just a rubber pop style deal at the front here. I think that's what it is. What's going on here? Turn it. I did have to turn it. One of those weird things. I don't know if you can at all see what I'm trying to show you here. It's kind of flat on this side actually, and then it's got like a barb on the top side. Weird. So you just gotta spin it to remove it, I guess. So this didn't really give me great access, which, like I said, I, I kinda knew already, but I think this'll probably be enough to uh, to be able to get in there, so this should just spin off here, I think, before I break anything, though. I'm gonna grab the hosing, rather than just the cap. And it comes off easy enough. Make sure not to knock anything in there. So your cap's not going to have anything in it, unless the diaphragm got stuck in it, that is. Looks like mine's just sitting in there, I suppose I can show you guys that, so you know what to expect. So that's just going to be a diaphragm that kind of sits inside of there. It just kind of pops off. Again, I'm probably going to want two hands for that. Make sure if you drip any of this stuff anywhere that you clean it up because this will take paint right off. Yeah, now with that out and some light in there, I guess I can kind of see that mine is, I guess maybe just a hair above the upper level. So probably not something that would cause an issue under most circumstances, but I'm definitely going to feel a little bit better uh, once I pull a little bit of fluid out of there. So I'm going to 
figure out a way to snag some of that. All right, so I got you guys in a little bit better spot, and my wife found me the last plastic straw in the house, straight from a restaurant. And then I'm just gonna do the old eyedropper trick that everybody's dad taught them. Dunk it in, put my finger on the end, try not to lose a drop, and drip it in. I get a couple of those. There's some time for the dehumidifier to kick on. All right, I'm feeling a lot better about that. So if you can see there, that's my upper level. So then reassembly is extremely easy. I'm just gonna take this back out of here. And that, of course, is going to go this side down. It'll be like that. Once that's in place, get our cap in there too. And this will go back on more or less the way it came off. And I am going to be sticking a little bit of blue Loctite on all of these bolts. Just since they are uh, extremely small diameter and uh, definitely not something you want to over tighten. And I've got pretty knobby tires on here too, so don't want to have the, the good vibrations rattling all my bolts loose. Probably don't need anywhere near that much. And that green stuff kind of seemed like it sort of fell off of there, so I'm just going to add another dab of blue on there. Won't hurt. That black one went in the front. There we go. That's all there is to it. That shouldn't uh, shouldn't give me any problems now, whether it would have or not. I guess I don't know, but uh, I'm gonna feel a heck of a lot better about it doing highway speeds now that I've got it to the correct level. So mine's ready to go. Make sure you check yours. If you guys thought this video was helpful, please give it a like. Hitting that like button really helps me out. If you guys want to see some videos of me out riding the Tenere, pretty much all off-road, uh, maybe a little bit of on-road stuff, just since this is gonna be a fun bike on the road. Uh, Make sure you hit this subscribe button um, probably here and then I will uh, I'll put some videos for you to check out right now in front of my face that, uh, that YouTube thinks you might like. So other than that guys, take care, stay safe, stay swanky, get out and ride and enjoy this beautiful world. Ooh, I'm tired.